All right, so we've got a full summary for Chapter 1109. There are many interesting things in it, such as Vegapunk's fate, the truths he will reveal to the world, and the arrival of unexpected enemies. So, without further ado, let's get started. This chapter is entitled Obstruction. The chapter begins where the last one ended. The recording initiated in the previous chapter was made in the past by Vegapunk. Shaka is telling Vegapunk that he should not speak immediately and consider the people's preparation to hear his message. If some information source picks up his message, it will be spread to the world tomorrow. He's concerned that someone might pick up the message first and spread it. Vegapunk then asks Shaka what he should do. The Marines are wondering where the broadcast is coming from. One answers that it's coming from the comms in their ship. Shaka explains that this message's transmission waves are being compulsorily broadcasted with maximum output to all marine bases in the world. A marine officer commands the line to be cut off, but it's not possible. Shaka says that the voice message can be received in normal transponder snails, but the preparation for video transponder snails varies. Shaka suggests they should wait for an interval of one hour. Vegapunk says that one hour is too long. Saturn wonders what Vegapunk will tell the world. Shaka explains that people receiving this message willingly will most likely encounter hindrances or delays. Vegapunk understands and says that the receiving preparation interval would be 10 minutes. Vegapunk begins the message with, To the world. Scene cuts to the Holy Land Mary Geois. The Gorosei are wondering what the message being broadcasted is. The other Gorosei ask Saturn what happened to Vegapunk. Saturn says that he saw Kazaru stab Vegapunk so he should be dead. The Gorosei wonder where the source of the transmission is. The only possible source they can think of is from the Labapasa, which is currently being protected by a barrier. The Vegapunks are discussing what they should do during the next nine and a half minutes before the message transmission. Scene cuts to Dress Rosa. The citizens are hurrying to prepare the video transponder snail to receive Vegapunk's broadcast. We see Kiros, Kabu, Leo, Rebecca, and Tank Lepanto. Leo asks Rebecca, what's the situation with the professor that Luffy holds hostage? Rebecca tells Leo that he shouldn't believe the bad article written about Luffy. Scene cuts to Fusha Village. The citizens are wondering if the broadcast will be more of Luffy's mischief. They're requesting the mayor for a video transponder snail. Whoopslap responds and asks, who will provide the money? He also says that breeding a video transponder snail is also not free. He then finally says that hearing the audio should be enough. Scene cuts to Water 7. The genius 10-year-old girl that got the secretary position for Iceberg, shown in Chapter 655, is named. Her name is Alice. She wakes up Iceberg. Iceberg tells her to prepare for the video transmission. Alice responds that it's already prepared in the other room for Iceberg. The video screens on all shipyards have also been prepared. She says that she understands that it's in the middle of the night, but the gravity of the importance of the message is of utmost importance. So she contacted everyone in the city and provided instructions. Scene cuts to the Air Balloon HQ of the World Economic Newspaper. We see Morgan's, Vivi, Wapple, and the reporter that lent Vivi some clothes being smitten with her. Morgan's wonders what the transmission is all about. He says that it is being broadcasted from all marine bases, but it is being done arbitrarily. Vivi asks where Luffy and the others are in the video. Morgan's tells her to look closely at the clock in the video transmission. It does not match with the current time on Egghead, so he says that this is a pre-recorded video. We can also see various reactions from the citizens in West Blue, North Blue, and South Blue. Scene cuts to Kamabaka Kingdom. We see Ivankov, Koala, Lindbergh, Morley, Sabo, Bello Betty, and Dragon. The Vegapunks are discussing. They ordered coffee in the automatic cooking machine, but it will take 10 mins. Vegapunk Stella comments that they won't be able to drink it. Pythagoras was calculating the possibility of the transmission being obstructed, but it's low. Ivankov wonders what Vegapunk is doing and comments that Vegapunk's head got cut. Koala is surprised to see the Vegapunk satellites. Dragon reminisces the time that Shaka tells him that he was going to die. Back to Egghead. Luffy comments that no matter how many times he punches Saturn, it doesn't seem to work on him. Both Kizaru and Saturn attack Luffy. Kizaru shoots lasers from his eyes and Saturn tries to pierce Luffy with his legs, but Luffy dodges both. Luffy then slaps Kizaru and Saturn together with his giant hands, using a very strong attack called Gomu Gomu no Don symbol, turning them into a kind of flat paper. Luffy grabs the squashed Kizaru and Saturn and throws both of them into the sea. Kizaru hits a battleship, and we see him lying down, panting on the ship. However, Saturn flies back like a boomerang and attacks Luffy. Luffy dodges the attack and becomes angry when he sees Saturn is uninjured. 
The four members of the Gorosei make contact with Saturn again. It wasn't long before Black Lightning appeared on Egghead Island. The Marines watching from the battleship were shocked. In the epic final double page of this chapter, Saturn hits the ground and four giant magic circles appear around him. A large black flame emerges from the magic circle. Luffy is shocked, his eyes bulging out, and Sanji, who is carrying Vegapunk, is shocked to see black flames that appeared where Luffy was fighting. The chapter ends with the narrator saying, The stars are assembling. 